Good morning. Welcome to Tomatoes, Poppies, and Everything Gardening. I'm Heather. I am coming to you from Central Virginia, Zone 7. And so today we're going to talk about corabels or hookara, which is a plant that I have come to really love. It's not the most showy thing uh, plant. It doesn't flower these gorgeous blooms, but what it does is provide year-round coverage um, as far as foliage and um, color. So I have come to really uh, respect, <laughs> I don't know if you can respect a plant, but um, I really do enjoy having hookara. And um, I have many, many different varieties and I have grown some from seed and I have also divided and I have also purchased quite a few, especially when I can get them on clearance. Um, so let's go take a look at some of my hookara and I'm gonna talk to you about uh, what's going on today. And today is going to be kind of a maintenance day for some of my hookera here on the walkway. Hookera is a perennial, and if you live in above, let's say six and above, I believe, it is an evergreen, so it's beautiful year-round, beautiful color, and that is exactly why I put it on this walkway, so I could just kind of camouflage this wall here next to the walkway where nothing else would grow. So you saw by that clip that the flowers that come off of the hookra, it's kind of like a straight up upright stem and it isn't a true like beautiful blooming flower. It's more of like um, just a cluster of little tiny blossoms and the bees do love it. And that's kind of the problem. So my family has requested I cut all those off because they don't like walking past this area and the bees, you know, get upset with them. So that clip I took a few days ago when I was prepared to do the project of cleaning up this walkway and then I got distracted. So I'm going to show you what the mess looks like today after we got a horrible storm last night and um, well let's just... So you can see that the hookara is really low now into the walkway and I really do have to clean this up. It's uh, hard to bring a trash can this way or even walk this way, especially if it's sunny and the bees are everywhere. Um, and I think what we're gonna do is I'll leave this one and then some of the same variety of that one are tucked down in here. I'm thinking about maybe relocating them, but I'm not exactly sure. I may leave them after I clean up some of these leaves. Um, and that was something I should have thought about when I planted these, is that this variety, and I don't remember the names of any of my hookra, it gets quite a bit taller than uh, the shorter one. And I had planted them every other. So let's go see my hookra babies. Um, I didn't trim those last year, so all of the flowers just fell and I have so many babies that I have been collecting um here's a couple other hookeras I love this variety and I don't know the name but it's a beautiful fire cranberry radish color and then there's some more hookera back in there you can see that they really like to be placed in the shade or low light so these are all the babies that I have been collecting and putting into these long pots. Um, I think really, really soon we're gonna divide these into their own individual pot. These I just picked the other day. And then I do have some hooker babies um, in this pot that I started from seed. Here's one. I think this one's called Ruby Falls, yeah. And then I have hookera that I divided. And you can see that it took to the division. And it has new growth coming off. Put two in this pot. So, lots of hookera. It is a wonderful plant because it can be zones four through nine, I believe. I think the sweet spot is five to seven. These are some I bought at Aldi's uh, when they had the sale. And that was, oh gosh, at least a month and a half ago and these poor guys have been sitting here waiting to be planted. Um, and this is what the flower cluster looks like. So 
So there's many seeds in here. All right guys, so I'm gonna get busy working on cleaning that up and then I'm gonna show you the after. Here's another hookera. And this one I took a lot of cuttings off of uh, a couple months ago. It looks like it does have maybe a little rust here. That is one of the issues um, that they're prone to and other fungal issues. I'm gonna snap that off. I just cut down the Canterbury Bell and I'm gonna work my way all the way down. But I wanted to show you guys what the babies look like, the seedlings. So remember last summer I did not cut um, the flower stems, the stalks. And so there were so many babies that have seeded. Here is one. And there's a bunch right here. There's some back there. They even have seeded in the walkway. I picked so many out of the walkway. So um, I'm going to save all of these because I don't know if you've looked at the garden center, but hookera or corabels are very, very expensive. Um, I see them from 15 to 18 plus dollars at my local greenhouse. And so I have so many babies that really not sure what I'm going to do with them, but I'm definitely not going to let them go to waste. If I have to give them away, I will, or I'll just have a beautiful backyard full of hookera. Okay guys, I'm going to collect these and I wanted to show you how shallow rooted it's almond root, hookera, or corabel. And even when they get to be grown up plants, um, the roots aren't like super duper duper deep. Um, and they can actually do well in very dry locations. They're not super picky on um, soil. I really don't do much to my corbels or hookera. I don't water them, um, don't really fertilize them. Now the ones in containers um, are a little treated a little differently, but the ones in the ground, they are left to their own device and they do well, they do great. So you can see I am filling up this container very quickly and I have not moved from this spot. So I will probably have quite a few that I find today. So I just pop them in there, barely cover the root because they're so shallow rooted and then they will take off. Example why I think I might relocate some of my hookra. Um, see this variety and I do not know the name, but it's a very pretty kind of variegated variety. Um, he was just not getting enough light even though these guys do enjoy shade um, he had just no airflow no light at all and I think I will just put him in a pot somewhere and he will be happy and then I can let these guys this variety which is a taller variety kind of take over and spread as much as it wants because you will see here these guys have already reproduced uh, by root really well. Look at how I've got at least several plants in here. If I wanted to divide, I could. I'm not going to. I'm just going to remove the shorter variety and let these guys just kind of keep multiplying. And then eventually this will be nothing but this one tall variety of hookra. And when we get ready to move, I can always divide if it's the right time of year. And honestly, I know it's best spring and fall, but sometimes I do weird experiments in the heat of the summer. So if I needed to divide these guys, I don't think I would let the weather stop me. Um, so that's what we're doing. I've only, <laughs> I've only made it to one plant, but you can see already there's much more of the walkway visible and it looks healthier. Cut off some dead parts. It kind of had some rust and moldy issues going on so uh, and I did clean up these uh, Canterbury bells too I think I'll reseed just throw some seeds down in there and um, it's looking better cleaned up over here too found a bunch of hookah babies so I'm just gonna keep going it's starting to get hot out here Tonto's not liking it all right guys look at how much better this is looking you can see I removed uh, the smaller 
Pucara that wasn't getting as much air or light. And this is kind of where I'm going to take a break. And I'll finish those up in a minute. It is really hot and the sun is almost about ready to reach me. Um, but I wanted to show you this real quick. This is the perfect state to collect the seeds. And I do have a bag of hookah seeds somewhere that I've never done anything with. But I think I'll save this one. But I wanted to show you these are immature seeds. They're not quite ready. Um, there are a few that are brown down in there. So I think I'm just going to throw these in the woods. And if any develop or grow, great. Um, I would say most likely these are way too immature. But there's a few. There are a few that are ready. Um, but I will save this one. Just for fun. Just to have it. Now, um, these probably are not going to be true to the parent because a lot of cross-pollination that has happened, and that's okay. I've kind of given up on trying to remember which varieties of hookera I have and don't have, and it's okay if they're just a mix of whatever. They're still beautiful uh, flowers, not flowers, foliage to have in your garden. And maybe I'll create some kind of really unique and beautiful variety from mixing, like, I would say I probably have about mm, five to eight different varieties of hookah on the property. And um, yeah, so that's it. Well, that's not it. <laughs> I'm going to go take a quick break. And then I think the last video clip you will see today will be um, the finished product. So I am going to cover the soil with um, some garden soil that's real chunky and mulchy. So it's kind of like a mulch, but it'll have a little bit of fertilizer in there um, to help these guys out since I never feed them. And here are the babies. I've got a whole nother bin here full. Uh, probably can fit just a couple more. Obviously when they get bigger, they need to get potted up. But for now, they can grow like this. As I'm done, I probably have, goodness, 30, 40 hookah babies in there and I will be soon very soon putting them into little individual cells or a bigger pot they're way too close together but look what I found I found two hollyhock roots that I'm going to replant somewhere and that was from an experiment two years ago where I tried to grow hollyhocks there you can see the mess I've got about five of these plants this variety of hookah that I'm going to go relocate after this video but look at the difference. Ready for the reveal? Wow. Now I do still need to add mulch. I did add some garden soil. I'm going to put mulch down, but I don't have any that's dry right now. But you can actually see uh, the walkway. And I have some impatience just sitting around waiting to be potted somewhere. So I kind of put those in the spots where I had taken away the um, corabels that I'm going to relocate. And they'll do fine with shade. So I think it looks much better. I think my ha family is going to be so happy because now they can actually use this walkway without the bees, you know, trying to sting them. And also the trash can can actually fit now without tearing up my plants. So I'm really happy I took the time to do this today. And... I found a whole bunch of babies that will grow up to be nice, big, beautiful plants. And, oh, one more thing I want to tell you guys. So there is a weed that looks very similar to a hookara seedling. So that's hookara. And that weed over there, I can't remember the name. It might be mulberry, but I could be very wrong about that. Um, it tries to blend in with those guys, so sometimes it's hard to tell what you're pulling. Um, you can see the leaves are different. Alright guys, that's it. I hope you're having a great gardening day, and I will talk to you soon. Bye.